Hey everybody! Thanks so much for joining me today. Um, it's been a long, long time since I made a paranormal video like this, so I'm sure you guys are excited to hear what I have to say. Um, today I'm actually just going to tell you guys something that happened over 4th of July weekend. Um, went ghost hunting at my sister's um, house. It actually wasn't in her house, it was at one of her neighbors, and it was pretty exciting. Um, it was um, a little bit of a different kind of ghost hunting than I've ever done. You know I'm kind of new at this whole paranormal investigating and ghost hunting stuff, so I'm sure I'll come along more things like this in the future, but it was very hard and it took me a while to decide if I wanted to talk about this or not, but I figured since I do these kind of videos, it would be fair for me to share with you guys in case you guys ever run across something like this. Give you guys a little bit of a warning, especially if you guys feel you have sensitivity and that you can feel kind of ghost and paranormal and just feel sensitive to your surroundings. It's very important that I talk to you about this today. Now, over 4th of July weekend, I was invited up to my sister's house for a barbecue. But of course, since she knows I do the ghost hunting and she's been watching my videos on YouTube, she asked that I bring some of my equipment up and not only investigate her house, but also her neighbors across the street's house. Um, I didn't get a chance to actually do the investigation at her house because by the time I was done at the neighbor's house, I just decided I wasn't doing any more investigating that night. So she lives up in Pennsylvania. Actually, it's not really up. It's kind of just to the west of us. But um, it's about, you know, just an hour and a half from where I live, so it's not too far. And um, I'm going to tell you why she wanted me to do the investigation at the neighbor's house. Now, the neighbor's house is completely abandoned. There's no one living there. A few people have moved in there, but nobody really stays at this house. About, I think it's about four or five years ago, her friend that was the neighbor that was living there committed suicide on the deck of that house. Um, nobody's quite certain exactly what happened. She did hear a gunshot. She thought, you know, maybe people were shooting in the woods because they live in the woods in Pennsylvania. It's common to hunt. It's common to hear gunshots all the time there, I suppose. And she did smell something because that poor man was left there for three weeks on that deck before anybody found him. Um, now, you gotta understand, his house is across the street from her, but there's dense forest and woods you have to walk through to get to his house. It's not like she saw anything. But So he was there for three weeks before anybody found him. So she said that occasionally when she walked her son to the bus stop, especially in winter time when you could see the house because the, the leaves were off the trees and what have you, she saw somebody on the deck and they'd wave at her and she feels that he was still there because she knows people weren't there. Sometimes people would move in but they'd move out like a month later and I'm not saying it's because they saw ghosts or they heard ghosts there, but um, it could be. I don't know, because I don't have any documentation saying that. But um, So she's like, let's go investigate over there. We can walk right up on the deck where he did it. And I'm like, okay. There was also something she wanted me to look into that was in the woods heading over across to the house. Instead of just walking down the street and walking up his driveway, we decided we were going to go straight into the woods. Because there was something going on, like, the month before I got there that she wanted me to poke around and look into with her. So some lady that lives down the road from her has been going in the woods right across the street from her house and dumping... The first thing she did was dump something out of a plastic bag, take a container of what's kind of like a gallon milk jug full of white powdery substance, dump it all over whatever she dumped into the woods, and then she kicked leaves all around it. So my sister witnessed this and she's like staying away from the lady now and avoiding, you know, talking to her about it. She doesn't really know her well, but she wanted to know what was she was doing back there. So she's like, we're going to go see. So I'm like, great, I hope it's not a body or like a child's body or like a, you know, a newborn baby or something. If it was in a plastic bag like that, like, I'm not a forensic scientist and I'm certainly not the cops. So. I find something I'm just getting out of there so we take my niece and my sister and we go through the woods and we walk towards where the tree is and we know where she put
put the thing because the lady actually tied the bag that she dumped the thing out of to the tree where she dumped it and I told my sister I said well you know she tied the bag to the tree so she knows where she dumped it so she's gonna come back and my sister said oh no 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 she's been back she actually came back with her husband a few days ago and I'm like what the hell is this lady doing here so we get there and she's like I bet you she's doing some kind of ritual witchcraft and I'm like maybe I don't know I don't know much about witchcraft you know and she's poking around with sticks and I'm just looking at the leaves and I'm trying to see if anything's mound up unusual and you know I gotta tell you guys something when we were walking into that woods I saw something very very strange run in front of me so my niece and my sister were talking amongst themselves and I, we were all walking into the woods we were together but I was kind of ahead of them I was looking straight ahead because although I'm walking in the woods and I probably should be looking down or I'm walking so I don't trip because of my injury, I always have to be looking ahead at all times. And yes, I walk into things all the time because of that. But if I look down a lot, I'll just be in excruciating pain. So, as I was walking into the woods, I saw this thing run in front of me. And it ran like this. And it was red. So my first impression was, that's a deer. But as it was running, it disappeared in front of my eyes. It didn't disappear into the woods. It didn't disappear behind a bush. It didn't disappear anywhere except... It was gone. So I said to them, I just saw a deer and then I said, or a fox, because then I realized it was too small to be a deer and it just disappeared. Well, how do I know exactly what I said is because I had my voice recorder on the entire time we were walking into the woods just in case. So then it dawned on me that this little red fox thing had a hood on. So I think that was one of the most unusual and freaky things that I've ever seen in my entire life. Okay, so fast forward to where we get to the spot where the lady dumped the things and we're digging around a little bit in there. Well, she is. I'm not touching anything because I'm... I just got the heebie-jeebies from what I just saw. And if that's witchcraft, I don't want to bother it because I don't need, no, you know, anything put on me because I destroyed someone's spell or protection spell. I don't know. And my sister's like, I smell vinegar very thick where I'm digging around. And my niece smelled it too, but I never smelled it. Now, I don't know if I just didn't have, you know, I had a stuffy nose or whatever, but I didn't smell the vinegar, but those two smelled the vinegar. So I'm like, okay, that's good, but we never really found anything, but um, I got an EVP while we were digging around in there, and I'll put it in this video for you guys, and what you're going to hear is a woman's voice. Now, we're all women out there. I mean, my niece is older. She's almost 18 years old. My sister and I sound almost exactly alike. So you guys hear my voice right here, that's how my sister talks. So you guys know, it's none of us talking. What you hear is a woman say, I took her to the doctor. And then a couple seconds later, you hear, yeah, in the same voice, and that's it. I don't know where the hell it came from, I don't know if there was a woman out there some time ago and she took her daughter to the doctor or her son to the doctor well it had to have been a daughter because it was a her and she was just wanted to let us know that I don't know if it had anything to do with what the lady did out there but it was very very freaky I mean we went back to the house after we got done on the deck and we listened to that and I heard it first because I had the headphones in first and I'm like listen to this I'm like this is none of us talking what the hell is this and it's so weird so I'm gonna play it for you now I'll loop it three times so you guys can hear it. Now mind you, that uh you hear, that's me. You guys can hear, that's my voice. And the reason I said that is because my sister made a reference to dumping a body out there that may have been a small child and she said a certain small child's name that had been dumped and I'm not going to mention the name but I said uh like don't talk like that but that's what we were speaking about then and there so there was no reason for any of us to say I took her to the doctor so that was very odd EVP to get so we went up on the deck after that to the house and we went up on the deck and I'm telling you the energy there was just so dense that I almost vomited everywhere I'm not stomach sick you know, I don't have a strong stomach usually, so if there was some kind of a smell there, 
I could understand that I would vomit, but there's no residual smell, you know, five or six years later. I'm not quite sure how long ago it was. I think it was four or five, six years. But I just, the energy with there was so dense, I felt like I was choking, and literally I was gagging over the side of the deck, okay? And my niece is, like, telling me, she's like, if you throw up, I swear to God, I'm going to lose it, I'm going to throw up. I'm telling her, I'm not sick. I just feel a lot of energy, and I feel like there's spirits here who are trying to put their energy to me and show me that they're here, and I'm going to vomit. And she's like, is that a good thing? And I say to her, what? And on the EVP, you can hear a voice whisper, and I'm not certain what it says, so I'm not going to say what it says. I'm going to let you guys tell me what you think it says, because what I think it says is really ridiculous, and I don't understand why it would say that. But it's none of us. My sister was actually on the other side of the deck taking pictures. And I was vomiting over the side and my niece, my niece was just talking to me. So none of us whispered that. Let me know what you think it says. I'll loop it three times again for you here. So after, you know, I got my composure, I did a little EVP session for the man who killed himself. I was very respectful. I didn't ask questions like, why did you kill yourself or anything like that. I never ask questions like that if I do EVP. I find it very disrespectful to say, you know, how did you die? Why did you kill yourself? That's just not good. Why do, why would anybody think that a spirit wants to talk about that? I wouldn't if I was dead. So I said things like, you know, if you're still here, you should try to find some sort of a light to cross and do because people think that that is the way you will find your peace. All that jazz. Um, at the end of the session, I said, you know, if you go into a light, you will find more joy and peace than you ever had on earth. And that is probably what you were seeking when you did this because he did kill himself because he felt like he was, you know, had no other way out and everybody was turning their back on him. And I'm not going to get involved in that because it's not my business really. But when I said that, I felt, you know how you feel when you have like that tingling sensation all over you? That's how I felt when I said that. So I kind of feel like the man was like, maybe, I kind of felt like this on my head. So maybe he touched me to say, oh, thank you for being so nice to me. I don't know. But when we walked away, we all smelled cigar smoke really strong. And my sister can't confirm confirm or deny whether he smoked cigars because she didn't know right offhand. She was a, he was a buddy to her, but not a good friend. Um, but we all smelled that, and there was nobody around us smoking cigars. Um, now, I will tell you guys, while my sister was up on the deck taking pictures in the woods, straight across to the deck, she did see the little red thing run by too. She confirmed with me it was a small red thing, just red, and it had some white on it. It was hunched over, and she confirmed it was wearing a hood. If you guys heard of any spirits or entities like that that wander around woods, I'd like to know because I'm very confused as why that was running around. And she said the same thing as I, as I that it just disappeared. Very weird. Like, I would be like, if I didn't see it disappear, I would say, oh, I saw a fox. Or I saw a deer because I'm rational about these things, but my god, it disappeared right before my eyes. Um, so I think that's pretty much the whole story I have for you. Um, I'm sure if I forgot something, my niece will comment on this video because she'll watch it and she'll, you know, I can leave more comments in the comment section about it. But it was definitely a very trying experience. If you guys are going to ghost hunt where there was any kind of a violent death, whether it's a car accident, especially if it's a suicide or a murder, you need to be prepared that there's going to be a lot of negative energy and especially if you're a sensitive person and usually people who believe in these kinds of things and investigate them are sensitives, that's why you see spirits and you sense them and you hear them, you're going to feel that negative energy and it's very trying for you. I was upset for a long time after I left that place and you know, it just weighed on me so much that I didn't really want to ghost hunt after that. So, I haven't been ghost hunting since then. 
you know, it's it's very hard. It's hard to be in a situation like that. So you got to be prepared and always remember to ask for your higher power to protect you because you never know what's going to be around you other than the people that you seek out to contact. So thank you so much for watching. Please comment, rate, and subscribe. And if you are subscribed, I thank you so much. I love you guys. You are the best. And I will be bringing you more awesome paranormal videos in the future. Bye.